Hi everybody, it's uh, Atheism UK, and this is the uh, this is the first podcast we're doing as uh, I guess just conversation. You know, we're always having conversations about you know this bit of crap and that bit of crap. So we thought we might as well record them and and uh, put them out on the YouTube channel. So if you're on, watching on the YouTube channel, if you hit that subscribe button now <laughs> and uh, and subscribe to the channel and uh, listen to what we've got to say. Uh, the very first one we're going to do is uh, just a bit of a conversation about. Um, I, I guess the misconception of what an atheist is, and uh, with us today we got uh, we got Rich and Embers. Hi guys. Hello. Oh, oh comes to all around. Yep. <laughs> you can't get much more British than that, can you? It's, yeah. Um... <laughs> Atheism UK drinking tea. <laughs> uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about. Um, what atheism atheism is and i guess the misconceptions of what people think atheism is because we get a lot of conversations with theists that have these these views of who we are um so do you want to when you guys guys want to sort of start off with this and what you think atheism is uh i'll i'll go first shall i yeah um, yeah okay um atheism yeah a in front of any word and it means not so basically it's not a theist that's it so nice and easy isn't it yeah it's, it nice and easy, it, 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 it's pretty simple I mean, if i can shout out if i can shout out to some friends of mine um on the other side of the atlantic they're they're they're, they're they keep saying you know for them atheists atheism is you know no god um mm. it's that simple and um you know other things get attached to it but that is the absolute basics of it you know if you ask the question do you believe that a god exists if you say yes you're a theist any other answer which is not yes um is is uh, you fall into that category um whether you whether you want to adopt that label or not you fall into it you know it's uh, Quite simply, because I think one of the misconceptions is, you know, specifically from theists, because they they want to uh, make a point that atheism isn't true, which seems like a really weird way of saying. Because you hear that all the time: if atheism was true, then this would happen. If atheism was true, then this would happen. Um, and the, I think the real point of this is that they're there isn't one type of atheist. The only thing that we have in common is that we don't have a belief or we're not convinced that a God exists. And that's the only thing that ties us together, which is one of the reasons why atheist movements tend to argue about everything else apart from that one thing. You know, there's, there's so many sort of uh, people out there that uh, are in atheist organisations of some description or atheist, atheist collectives of some description. But they can come from... You know, the far right, the far left, have every political view, every single culture. Um, and there is nothing that ties us together apart from the one thing is that we're not convinced that a God exists. And that's the only thing that ties us together. But yeah. theists don't want that because they can't argue against it. That's the that's the biggest thing. They can't argue against uh, this, this whole strange movement um, that the only thing that holds us together is that we're not convinced that God exists. And that's the only thing. Because we have we have no guiding influence, we have no um, no books to follow, no leaders to follow. Um, there is no worldview apart from that one part of the worldview, which is we don't believe a god exists, and that's basically all it is. Um, I think I think this is one of the biggest misconceptions that I wanted to sort of get out straight away is that we're not all the same. I mean, even us, we argue about lots oh, of different stuff don't we just <laughs> no we don't um, yes well, we do <laughs> <laughs> i think one of the things is um because we do reject or not even reject you don't even have to actually um consciously reject it if you don't accept it if you don't accept that proposal that a god exists um it can inform other things because I because a lot of theists at least say they get their morality from a particular book or 
um, how they view history from a certain point of view, um, or, 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 or how, um, you know, how behavior should be moderated and regulated based upon, um, you know, perhaps their holy book or what their religious leader tells them um, or what have you. And we don't have that. Um, you know, we, you know, and, and again, it's one of those questions that comes up on a regular basis. And I'm sure it's one that we will um, examine in time. It's, you know, where do you get your moral values from, which yeah. is really, really, you know, it can get really, really annoying because um, I don't actually think they get their moral values actually from where they say they get them. We all get them from, you know, the way that societies have developed, but because of the influence theism has on societies, um, they have a they, they, they tend to they tend to view um, people like us who don't accept what they consider their source of that outlook on life to be um, is one of the reasons why often atheists get a little bit distrusted or um, you know, one of the most ridiculous comments is are those theists that say, oh, we don't believe that atheists exist because you've got to get it from somewhere. And that's, 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 you know, and that is, that is, that is that always their version of God. But of course, um, you know, we don't believe that. We don't accept that. And you can see from, um, you know, the trends of some of the things that atheists also tend to believe and speak about um again it's a tendency it's not a, an absolute because we don't all believe the same things but there are tendencies because we don't get that idea of a source of morality from a religion um and that that can breed distrust i think or mistrust rather than distrust i think um because again a lot of people that don't believe in god can't see the world um without those god glasses and a lot of them can't accept that other people don't see the world through those glasses and i think that's sometimes where a lot of problems come from but do you, do you think that um when people talk about morality uh do you think that in their situation whether it's in their congregation or their their culture or whatever it is do you think that this is something that comes up uh about atheists and it's always explained away as they an atheist has no basis for morality and therefore they by by definition they um, they must be immoral you know if you don't have guidelines what's stopping you killing and raping people and that that sort of question has always always puzzled the hell out of me why would you even go down that thought process why would you even go down that line but the um two main things that you you find from uh religionists is that uh, they think atheists are satan worshippers <laughs> and also we eat live babies uh, you hear this all the time. Um, in so fact, it seems to have been adopted as a bit of a running joke amongst the atheist community. Uh, uh, indeed. Um, to take the first point, uh, Satan is a product of a religious text, so that can't possibly exist for atheists anywhere. Uh, and the baby-eating thing uh, is ridiculous because I'm a vegetarian. So that's, uh, that's a non-starter. <laughs> Actually, I'm not a vegetarian, but you take my point. Yeah, yeah. But uh, do, um, do you think these 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 uh, these concepts, these ideas, are planted in young theists' heads to basically stop them even thinking about becoming atheist? You know, but by by putting that that information out there, no matter how ridiculous it sounds. When you when you talk to children about this sort of thing, that they believe in they believe in Satan, you know, and the, and to their young minds, it's it's got to be well, that's evil. Satan is evil. So if atheists 
are equated with Satan, then they've got to be evil and I'm never going to go near them. I'm not going to talk to them. Mm. But do you think that's it's, it's as basic as that? Oh, it's, I think it's even more basic than that. I mean, I, I, just to push back on one little phrase that you used where you said that these things are put in young theists' minds. They're put into young people's minds to turn them into theists turn in the first the theist, place. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, I mean, and you do have you do have um, organisations out there um, like uh, the Satanic Temple, for example, who are atheists. Yeah, who who treat Satan as a literary symbol um, of rebellion and freedom. Funnily enough, um, and um, I think sometimes, sometimes, and they do so in in the states, they do great work in terms of church state separation issues but i do sometimes wonder if they're playing into that um that idea i know of a few atheists um certainly from the american side who are members of the satanic temple and i know a few atheists in america that don't like the satanic temple for that very reason um i'm still 50 50 on it because of the great work that they actually do but um do you, do you think they, they they've done it just to piss people off i mean it literally oh. they, they were sitting around around the around a bar one day yeah and and said i'll tell you what we'll do <laughs> we call ourselves satanists that'll really piss them off it really it's really effective in highlighting the issue of of church state separation issues um and the and the very idea that in the American constitution, you've got to treat all religions, you know, equally. Yeah. Well, if you've got this religion that's called the satanic temple, um, and they're entitled to that same religious freedom, uh, under, you know, under the church state separation rules, um, it's absolutely, and people, there are, there are religious people that get it, um, eventually. But there are a lot that don't, and for them, religious privilege means privilege for their own religion. Yeah. Sorry, uh, sorry, not sorry. Religious freedom means freedom for their own religion, yeah, yeah, yeah. not for anybody else's. But as soon as you frame it in 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 those terms, they get it. But um, I do sometimes wonder if it can sometimes be counterproductive. I mean, they admit they are an, they are an atheistic religion. They don't yeah. believe in a literal Satan. Well, did they um, have um, uh, some? I can't, I, I can't remember the details, but did they have a uh, a thing where there was a statue of the Ten Commandments somewhere? Yep. And they lobbied the council or the the whatever it is called in America, the, the state um, government. Yeah, the state government. I think it was Oklahoma, uh, wasn't it? There, there, well, there's actually I, the. I, I can't remember where it was, but they 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 lobbied them to put a a statue of. Beelzebub up or something like that. Baphomet. I can't remember. And they and they won. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they won. Um, and um, the state legislature decided uh, not to put up the Ten Commandments after all. And uh, I think the Baphomet statue is now um, in a museum somewhere, or it's certainly ready to go uh, in case any other um, state decides to, to try again. Um, I'm not sure if it was Oklahoma, actually, because I think the Oklahoma one actually did go up. But ironically, a Christian ran it over. Um, a Christian who was a little bit, um, he wasn't completely stable, I don't think, but um, he also believed that it was idolatry. So he actually yeah. ran it over, which, you know, given that idolatry is one of those Ten Commandments, apparently. <laughs> so, 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 Andy, what's your, what's your take on... Um atheism uh, well my take from a personal point of view is that I, I've, I've never believed in god never have done um even as a child i didn't i used to go to church with my mum um but it it just always didn't fit in my head i couldn't understand it because it just seemed like it was made up i mean it's always just felt to me like it's it's made up i've, I've got a really good um i love literature and i love history and so i read the bible when i was pretty young uh, I, i'm talking about sort of 14 or 15 i decided to embark on reading it because I, when i was going to church i didn't understand why people would follow this you know to, to, to this extent to this 
this extent of having institutions and all that sort of stuff, you know, just puzzled the hell out of me. And so I decided to actually read the Bible that everybody's following, you know, because I was in uh, Church of England, uh, which, you know, as you probably know, is not exactly the most strict um, regime <laughs> in in uh, in religion. Uh, or, the most, gonna... or the most, or the, or the most uh, entertainingly stimulating. No, it's, it's pretty boring actually. <laughs> See if you, you go if you want, you don't go if you want, you believe if you want, you know. If you don't believe, then blah, well, you know. Um, but the, but the thing is, I just read the Bible and I, I read it with my mouth open. It was just absolutely bloody appalling, and I didn't, I couldn't wrap my head around why my mum and dad. Although I found out later on that my, my dad was a sort of closet atheist he just didn't want to piss me mum off but <laughs> i didn't realize why both my mum and dad my my you know the, the adult adults in my life um go to church and worship this book i just couldn't couldn't get it and from from then i started asking questions because i was curious about what you've got to guide me through this i went to my vicar and you've got to guide me through this um and it eventually just told me to piss off because I was annoying him too much you know um they don't like it when you ask questions they don't they don't I well I know that from from experience but I carried on doing this so you know we had um some friends a lot, a lot of my friends come from Irish descent and uh, so they're all sort of Catholic and uh one of uh, my friend's cousins is a priest and uh when I got a chance I sat down with him one evening and was just talking about you know he asked me if I was uh, if I went to church and, you know, if I was a Catholic and things like that, because they, they need to know. Um, and I just started asking him questions about, you know, these these points in the Bible that just I, I couldn't couldn't get through in my mind. Uh, and again, I just pissed him off because I was coming up with logical argument against it um, out of some sort of childish reasoning, you know, because I was only young at the time. Uh, and, it, and it's happened time and time and time again whenever I talk to people about this because I do generally want to know why people believe in God. You know, I don't, it's not I don't have that much against people who believe in who believe in God, just that God belief. Because we've got to separate this thing from God belief in a religion. You know, there's two distinct things going on here, but just this concept of belief in a God and how it's portrayed. I just couldn't wrap my head around. So I've been asking questions for a long, long time. But the for, for, to answer your question, Embers, is the uh, the only common, den common denominator is that most atheists don't, well, all atheists don't believe that God exists. You know, they don't, they're not convinced by any argument that a God actually exists. You know, I'm a big fan of science. Um, and just to put superstition in there, you know, it's, it's like the things about things like, um, you know, Big Bang Theory, evolution, consciousness, all those big philosophical questions. I actually want to try and understand the truth of that. And if you if you shoehorn God into things like, you know, what, what happens before the Big Bang? You know, what was what created? There's that word. What created the Big Bang? It must be God. But my uh, my question is, how do you know that? Because I don't know that. No scientist knows that. No one on the planet actually knows that, apart from everybody in religion who just shoehorns God in there, God of the gaps concept, you know. Uh, same with evolution, you know. Same with consciousness. There's all yeah. these questions out there that we as humans are trying to find the answers to. And I think as soon as you put in, it must be God, you just stop inquiry. You just stop looking anymore. And I and, and yeah, and and, and my and my, my respect reaction to that is well, why must it be God? And you usually get something along the lines of well, I can't think of anything else, which, as we all know, is in in and of itself is a, is a logical fallacy. But um, mm -hmm. yeah. one of them actually, I, I wanted to I wanted to pick up on a ask you a question, Andy, about one of the things that you just said. Um, when you are asking people why they believe in God. And I'm wondering, you know, because whenever I ask believers that question, I'm not always entirely sure I'm getting the actual answer. Hmm. Um, you know, like stock I, answers. Yeah, I think you, you occasionally you, you get stock answers. I find that you actually get 
answers that they think you want to hear um, or the you know the real reason they believe was because they were taught to believe it at a young age but they've not thought deeply enough about why they actually believe to answer that as a question i'm not saying that they're answering dishonestly um you know i'm saying that they've been conditioned into giving answers such as oh i believe because it works for me or i believe because i feel god in my life or no, you only feel, but you only feel that because you've been conditioned to think in that way. But because you've been conditioned, you don't realize that you've been conditioned. So um, I, I do sometimes wonder when you do ask them those questions, um, whether the answer you're getting back is accurate. Well, one of the biggest questions you can, you can ask uh, people with those attitudes is, how do you know that? Mm. tell me how you know that so it's mm. well you know god is god is god and god speaks to me well what is your god mm. describe to me what your god is yeah and when um, you get people and when you get people saying oh i just know well no <laughs> you, you don't just know um you know how do you just know that humans have a huge capacity to be able to believe anything they want to believe. If you want to believe in fairies, if you want to believe in angels, if you want to believe in unicorns, you can believe that. If you believe somebody loves you, but they don't, you can still believe that. Uh, human mind has a huge capacity to believe anything it absolutely wants to suit yourself. Yeah, no, I, I totally believe that because I, th I think that you know, if uh, if I wanted to, I could convince myself, and I'd I'd be able to do that. I'd be able to convince myself that a God exists. I'd just choose to decide to do that, and then I'd 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 try and find anything that supports that that theory. Mm. I think I could probably do that. I mean, I I I, I don't think I can in the way my my mind is at the moment. But if I decided to do that, I'm damn sure I could do it. I'm damn sure I could convince myself. Oh, yeah, I'm but, sure I mean, you can convince yourself of anything. But, I mean, or, or can you? I mean, Mark, you're, you're, you're the, uh, you are the, uh, you're the psychology expert here. So. <laughs> uh, I, I disagree with you, Andy, actually. Um, I don't think you could. Because you you don't have any motivation to do that, you don't have any reason to do that at all. Um, no, I'm not talking about just out of the blue. Like no, I'm not talking about oh, do you know what? I'm actually going to believe in God and I'm going to I'm going to justify it in my own head and things like. I'm talking about um, if I was in a situation and I didn't have just the the, the whole background. Because look, I'm, I'm I'm in an atheist organization in the UK. I'm in an international atheist organization as well. You know. I'm, I am full on in this, you know, um, if, if I was just, you know, living a normal life and didn't really think about it too much, uh, I'm damn sure that it, someone could say something to convince me and I could tilt quite easily if I wasn't, I don't think I could convince myself personally now, but I think if I was younger and, uh, I, I had a conversation yeah. with someone I, that I've respected and, I believed what they were saying and things. I think it could be quite easy to just steer yourself down that road. And as soon as you go down that road, if someone asks you, why are you believing God? Straight away, you're going to go on the defensive and put every argument under the sun up. I mean, most theists that I talk to don't use, uh, you know, theist argument. They don't know things like, you know, the, the cosmological argument or, you know, they don't know any, any of the sort of standard apologetic arguments. They come up with things like, I don't know, I just believe. And you, this is why I like this this concept of street epistemology, where you don't you don't argue with people like, you know, well, you're wrong and all that sort of stuff. It just yeah. I just like to try and discover what it is. I'm not I'm not really there to try and change their mind. I'm, it's not my place to do that. I don't think. Um, but. I find if you just ask them questions about their belief systems and why they believe in things, you you tend to get 
really, really thin arguments. And it just makes them think, am I thinking the right way? Am I, am I, am I thinking this in a, in a, in a rational way, for instance, you know, cause this is not, this is not about debate. You know, this is not about uh, theist versus atheist debates where you get like William Lane Craig on one side and Sean Carroll on the other. Uh, and they're both coming up with their best arguments for God and not God. Funnily uh, enough, actually, just on that very briefly, there was a recent survey that was done of believers in the United States. Again, because a lot of this stuff comes from the States. And they actually found that the most most day-to-day churchgoers, most day-to-day believers, have never even heard of William Lake Craig. No, no. <laughs> anyway, and he's put up as the the top person. But um, one of the things I've also found with him as an individual is he very much has a script. Oh, and, sure. he stick, yeah. and he sticks to the script time and time and time again, never wavers from it. And a lot of de- atheist debaters now have learnt his script so well that they can counter it before he even speaks. And he still regurgitates that script, even though it's already been totally destroyed um, by, by previous speakers. And there's no reflection there. It's, um, um, as another friend of mine says, you know, when you, when you're have, often when you're having an argument um both you and your opponent tend to only listen to respond rather than to listen to understand and you go into send mode and you never go into receive mode which is again why i think the street epistemology um approach which requires you to genuinely want to listen and understand um on on the part of us when we're asking those questions is I think a superior method. Cause again, I want to, I want to make sure that I'm, I want to make sure that I'm right. You know, I don't want to be wrong. Um, but I also don't want to be dishonest, um, about what I know, um, which, which leads to the other issue is the human's capacity. And again, embers, you might want to bring, have a, have a quick word about, about word about this is the the humans tendency not to want to admit when they don't know things Mm. well uh that's a really good good point rich uh, because humans are very very good at knowing what they don't know Mm. Um, sometimes our memory fails us and we, we might you know try to recall things uh, and we know we know it, but we can't retrieve it. But we're very good at knowing what we don't know. Uh, so, uh, but we're very bad at admitting it. Ab- absolutely, yes, absolutely. But, but guys, this is the other thing that I find with with atheists in sort of in general is they don't really mind saying they don't know something. You know, for instance, you know, like what happened uh, at the beginning of the universe. Well, we've got a we've got the Big Bang theory. The, uh, and and this is the other thing they, they they tend to do is that it's only a theory. But oh, you know, let's, let's talk, we'll talk about that, that in a minute, maybe. <laughs> but right. you've got the Big Bang theory, and this is the you know cumulative knowledge of uh, you know uh, all the science that we've got put together. All the it's the, our best explanation of what happened at the beginnings of the universe. Um, if you are someone who's atheist and into that sort of thing because not all atheists are into science and stuff but if you ask them that there's no there's no uh, real uh, shame in saying that we don't know so what happened before the big bang no one that well if you can actually use that temporal phrase but no one knows what happened before the big bang we don't know but theists know they know that god did it well, and they I, claim my question is, to know. How the bloody hell do they know? Yeah. You know? Yeah, they don't <laughs> know. Nobody they else claim does. to know. They claim yeah. to know. But the thing about science, physics, uh, et cetera, is that we will know. Mm. We will eventually know as it progresses. But religion just stops all of those arguments. Yeah. It mm. just says, God did it. It's, it's like almost like I, I, I'm, I'm happy being ignorant to the truth or happy being ignorant to the facts. Because before the Big Bang Theory came out, the 
as far as Theus was concerned, it was you know uh, an internal eternal universe ruled by an eternal god. There was no explanation for it, and so it, like, it, it, a big I mean, bang it, came it, out. It, it varies. I mean, obviously, it varies from religion to religion. I mean, um, you know, bearing in mind that the Big Bang theory itself was actually first posited by a priest, uh, um, Lemaitre, um, who was a Catholic priest. And in fact, the um, the the atheistic theory, for want of a better word at the time, was um, steady state theory, which actually did posit an eternal universe. Um, so, um, you know, sometimes um, the atheistic th theory, uh, <laughs> in scare quotes, was wrong. But it was science that taught us that it was wrong. And it was through science that the prevailing theory changed. And that's another that's another thing that I really, really hate when people try to certainly theists try to um, paint the very fact that science changes when it gets new information as a weakness. When actually <laughs> it's one of the biggest strengths is the accepting when you are wrong and accepting new information, which is something that religions are, tend to be very poor at. Um, yeah, but that's that's exactly what science is is built upon. I mean, if 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 someone could, it's like evolution. If someone, our our, our theory of evolution is pretty stable nowadays. We don't really know every single thing about it. We don't know how. Uh, in reality, we don't really know exactly how life began on this planet there's lots of hypotheses lots of theories lots of ideas lots of concepts and one of those may be may be right but until we've actually can prove it got evidence for that it won't become part of the theory so and none of them and none of them require the intervention of a supernatural agency yeah yeah see that so automa the... automatically more plausible yeah but this is the other thing that the the, the thing that I think makes or is part of my atheist makeup is that I just don't believe in the supernatural. Mm. You know, there is no evidence that anything supernatural has happened. And if, it, if anything does happen, it, it immediately reverts into the natural and mm. there's got to be an explanation for that phenomena. Mm. And if there's an explanation for that phenomena, we'll find out what that explanation is and it will, yeah. it will come out of being supernatural to natural. Yeah, but there is I no believing ghosts, for instance. I don't, I, you know, I, I don't believe in fairies or yeah. and things like that. There's a wonderful quote. Um, wonderful quote was: um, "There is no supernatural or paranormal. There is only natural, the natural, the normal, and the mysteries we have yet to explain." Beautifully put. Beautifully mm. put. Mm. Uh, so let's. let's, let's uh, Sorry, Andy. Uh, um, that, let, let's drag this back to atheism, shall we? Yeah, why not? <laughs> See, that's another thing. What does atheism mean to you? The ability to go off on tangents. tangents. Yeah, because we just know so much. That's that's the thing. A lot of <laughs> lot of atheists, you know, or you know, well, you know, know more about religion than people who claim to be religionists. Yeah. Um, but which is borne uh, out in study after study yes it, 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 indeed because we you know we take an interest in it um but for me my my personal view is that yeah you know obviously we're all born as atheists even though we you know we don't understand what the term means etc so we're born without religion and then something has to happen where you're indoctrinated with religion. Uh, usually that's by your parents and then the society that you live in. So if you're born in Iran, it's you know, probably 99% certain that you're going to be brought up uh, in Islam. Uh, if you're born in the Bible Belt in America, it's you know, fairly certain that you're going to be a Christian. Mm. Uh, that's the indoctrination that you're going to have whether you pursue that with that when you get older and um, that that that's another thing um a lot of a lot of adults who uh, have been brought up 
in this, you know, maybe think that, uh, you know, don't really agree with this, but I, I can't actually uh, discard it or be an apostate because that could be dangerous in some countries. Uh, mm. So, you know, we are well, all you know, in some countries, it's atheists. a capital offence. Indeed, you, you can die. There's still 13 countries that have got a death sentence for being uh, an apostate. Actually, it's now only twelve. Uh, one of the uh, was it Sudan recently, um, in the last year or so, ended the death sentence for apostates. So, yay, progress! Yeah, only <laughs> <laughs> twelve. Oh, yeah. yeah, only. But it's a thought crime. Death sentences for thought crime. It's. Oh, no. I just don't. It's. And, and and what was it that in in Saudi Arabia they actually the, the minister for justice said being an atheist is is if you're an atheist you are by definition a terrorist by definition yeah and remember uh, a few years ago well years ago uh, George W Bush said uh, if you're an atheist you can't be an American patriot. Oh, that was yeah. That was that was George H. W. Bush. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah, no, it's okay. okay. Um, although, although um, whether he actually said that is fed, is contested, but I can imagine him saying that. Yeah. I, and there are plenty of serving American politicians actually that still do say that openly um, in both of the main parties. So, despite well, it, this, you know. It, it it obviously you know obviously the it, it, again this is the whole thing about sort of, you know, when we first started talking about this when uh, we were talking about um, theists believing that we're you know satanists and baby eaters and all the rest of it um, this is the sort of thing that just sort of it permeates through throughout politics uh, that if you're an atheist you can't be trusted because of this 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 and this and this you know so. This is one of the reasons probably why a lot of uh, politicians don't really come out and uh, and state that they're atheist uh, or or at least not not convinced of mm. God or religion and things like that. So they can't be that because they just won't get votes. And one of the one of the things I think that is uh, a lot of sort of international um, humanist and uh, and atheist organisations are trying to. Be, get normalized is this concept that atheism isn't what theists believe and i think this is one of the reasons why we started this conversation which uh i think it's been bloody interesting but i think we we, we ought to stop and yeah, uh, yeah. and regroup. one thing i do want to point out though is um regarding that the issue of the intersection with religion and politics is and this is one thing i'm actually quite glad about is it doesn't seem to be as big an issue in the uk no, no, it isn't. Bringing it back to a specifically UK context, because, you know, we are Atheism UK. You know, we have had, we have had politicians who are openly atheist, yeah. openly humanist. Um, we tend, to, although our politicians actually don't tend to talk about it, because in the UK, talking about your religion is considered to be inherently weird. Um <laughs> Yeah. Even amongst those who are believers, it, it often it often tends to be inherently weird. I mean, and there was that Liberal Democrat, um, was it was it Nick Clegg who who, was, who came out as uh, Christian? I, don't, I can't remember if he was Catholic or not, or whatever it was. But they were asking him questions about Tim Farron. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Leader of the Liberal Democrats, who was an evangelical Christian, and he actually and actually when he resigned, if I recall correctly. He actually said one of the reasons why he resigned was because there was a tension between his religion and his party's policies, um, which uh, I think is is again quite. It's you know so it does still happen in the UK, yeah. But he often didn't want to talk about it much because, because you, you, know, can't, you can't justify that uh, uh, that sort of belief mm. with a political stance. No. No, you see, it's, um, there is, there is a uh, there's a contradiction in that. Yeah. So, although um, to to go back to Nick Clegg for a second, he actually said, you know, he was a non-believer, but his wife was a Catholic, therefore he has respect for religion, 
and he's bringing his kids up Catholic, yet he doesn't believe. So again, you know, it inf it infects people's mindsets sometimes. Yeah. You know, even 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 the non-believers amongst us. Um, and I think it was um, friend of the friend friend of the uh, organization, um, the psychologist Daryl Ray, who written entire books about how religious ideas still infect and permeate wider societies and can still affect the non-religious. You know, the, the the God virus, as he called it. Yeah. And yeah, you know, and it, it just does go to show that it still has an impact, even in the most secular of societies. Um, it can still have an impact, and that's why we need to be aware of it. And I think why we, okay, we're not necessarily out to change people's minds, but we should at least be challenging. The, you know, going back to the idea of um, challenging the very concept of faith um, as an acceptable way of knowing something, because even on its face, it isn't. You know, um, and... Uh, so, I mean, that, that's sort of the reason why we're doing what we're doing. Um, because we genuinely, going back to this idea of morality, we actually want a much better world. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you yeah, know, the challenge that we often get is, well, wh how, wh why, where's your basis for thinking that that would be better? What's your basis for your definition of what is better? Um, and, you know, we tend to ground our morality in ideas around welfare, well-being, suffering, trying to minimize suffering, trying to minimize, um, you know, pe people, in, well, you know, well, you know what I'm trying to say, yeah, trying to trying to minimize minimize suffering, you know, yeah, and maximizing welfare and well-being. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of things that we we do in our UK that are trying to. Uh, push a separation of church and state, um, get a more secular world and all those sort of things. There's lots of things we do. If you want to find out any more about that, then just comment below. I'll put a bunch of links below to uh, the website and stuff like that. Uh, but uh, in the meantime, guys, look, we'll, we'll do another one of these. Uh, we'll bring some more people from AUK in and uh, we'll have some, uh, some really good discussions. I think this one's been really good. So uh, subscribe to the channel if you can. Uh, and if you need to know anything, just comment below the video and we'll contact you and uh, we'll answer any questions that you've got. Even if you're a theist, we'll answer your questions. Especially if you're a theist. Especially if you're, and we'll be polite. Yes. <laughs> because we're morally good. Mm. Well, most of the time anyway. This has got, <laughs> been absolutely fantastic. Thanks for, for joining us today. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back very, very soon with another one of these mini casts from Atheism UK. See you later. Bye. Thanks, Andy. Bye, all. Well, thanks for joining us today, and don't forget to click that like button. Also, make a comment, and of course, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you next time.